An indicator is a basic tool in machining, building machines, and fixing machines. You use it to make extremely fine measurements to ensure that things are made or assembled correctly. Now, an indicator doesn't actually provide absolute measurements, like length or width. You use a caliper, a micrometer, or even a scale for that. An indicator measures the difference between a desired position and the actual feature. How tall is this part? You need a scale for that. How tall is this part compared to this one? That's when you use an indicator. Before we use an indicator, however, let's talk a little bit about machinist math. This is important because we all need to speak the same language, and machinist math can take a little getting used to. The basic measurement is one thousandth of an inch, called a thousandth or a thou. This is how it's expressed on paper. And this is ten thousandths. So what would you call this? That's a hundred thousandths, because we're counting up or down from the third decimal place. Going the other way, a tenth or ten thousandth looks like this. Test indicators are commonly available with either five-tenths or one-tenth graduations. The dial of a one-tenth indicator is broken up into units of a ten-thousandth of an inch, or .0001. As the needle moves, each tick measures less than a hair's width of travel. It's that precision that makes these tools so valuable. Here at the Haas factory, we use two types of indicators, test indicators and drop indicators. The test indicator, often called a dial indicator, uses this lever-style arm called a stylus to convert very small lateral movements into a rotary reading on the dial. The spindle of the drop indicator, also called a travel or plunge indicator, is usually set to drop straight down on the part being measured. They're great for measuring movement in the range of an inch or more. The distance being measured here is pretty large. You can see the number of revolutions the needle makes on the drop indicator. The stylus on the test indicator can't even reach most of the distance. Here the distance is particularly small. Now the test indicator measures it accurately, but the precise distance isn't quite visible on the drop indicator. As you can imagine, these instruments are amazingly sensitive, so you'll want to make sure your indicator is firmly mounted to something like a magnetic base. Secure the base firmly against a clean, flat surface like the face of a spindle. Keep the indicator as close to the primary shaft of the base as possible. As it gets farther and farther from the mag base, it gets more susceptible to vibrations, deflections, and droop in the different arm connections. This can lead to inaccurate readings. So you've got your indicator attached to the mag base. Now if you're using an inter-rapid indicator like we use here in the Haas factory, you'll need to align the stylus so that it rests at a 12 degree angle to the surface you're indicating. 12 degrees is where these are most accurate. To see the importance of setting this angle correctly, let's measure the same surface at different stylus angles. First, we'll set our indicator to 12 degrees, set it to zero, our reference position, on this accurate 0.15 inch gauge block. Now we'll move the indicator to this 0.149 inch gauge block. As you can see, the dial moved by one mark or a thou. As we know the height of the two blocks, we know that this is an accurate measurement. Next, let's change the angle from 12 to 30 degrees. We'll set the indicator stylus on the 0.15 block and set the indicator to zero. When we move to the 0.149 block, now we get a reading of one thou and two tenths. That's 20% off, which doesn't seem like much. But imagine one of your shoes being 20% tighter than the other. So let's try the stylus at 45 degrees. Now the indicator reads 1,005 tenths. That's an error of 50%. In the world of accurate machining and machine tool building, an error of this size can result in parts getting scrapped or a machine getting built out of spec. Finally, let's go to the ridiculous extreme of putting the stylus at 90 degrees. <laughs> Obviously that's just silly, because the stylus wasn't even designed to move in that axis. So always set an inner rapid indicator at 12 degrees from the surface to be measured. If you're using an indicator made by a different manufacturer, be sure to know the angle at which you should set the stylus. Now with the drop indicator, the spindle reads the linear movement as it moves into the indicator body. This instrument should always be mounted perpendicular or at 90 degrees to the surface being measured. You can get the stylus to move if you mount it at, say, 85 degrees, but the measurement will not be correct. Remember, this type should always be mounted square to the surface being indicated. At Haas, we routinely calibrate the company's supplied indicators. It's a best practice that keeps our indicators accurate. You'll find the next recalibration date printed on the indicator's case. Now, if you drop or shock an indicator, you definitely need to get it recalibrated immediately. And you should also get it recalibrated any time the readings don't seem to be quite right. While they're designed to be used in an industrial environment, it's important to take care of these sensitive instruments. Put them back in their protective cases when you're done with them. Don't subject them to coolant or any other liquid. If you do get liquid on your indicator, wipe it off immediately. 
Take care not to bang them around and definitely do not drop them. If you give an indicator a hard knock, get it recalibrated before you use it again. And now you have an introduction on how to use a basic but critical tool in the machine building and machining businesses.